Welcome to the reading vlog. I'm in the middle of nature. Ah, <laughs> uh, wow, the steps are deep, but uh, it's been great. So I'll be reading Paranesi for this vlog, and um, you know, I wanted to pick a short book for the trip because it's like the best thing you can have, like a short book that is whimsical, you know, magical. And will transport you to a whole new world, which I am right now in a whole new world. So, let's see how it goes. Oh, 
pieces of paper. I'm back from my trip and I hope you guys enjoyed the really beautiful footage of um, me in Japan and I had a greatest time like honestly um, it was really fun I had a great time with my mom and my sister and we went like three different places in uh, the Fukuoka like Mi Miyazaki region um, seen lots of great sights ate lots of great food and um, now I'm back home. So an update on what I've read actually during the trip. So I managed to finish actually two things. Or I would say... Um, you could say nine things. I feel I finished Paranesi for one. Which is what I intended to read in the vlog. And also I read... Yakuza Fiance, which is a manga uh, that has eight volumes out so far and is still ongoing, which is the flaw of my plan. So let's begin with Paranesi and the update on Paranesi first. So with Paranesi, I thought of reading it for the Japan trip because one, one it's really, really short. It's about 200 pages or so. And two, it, I heard it's really like whimsical and mysterious. And the truth is, I enjoyed myself immensely. I didn't know if I would. Because usually, I'm not the kind of person who can go into a book without real much context about how it is. And it's really a, either a hit or miss for me. So it's either I'm going to love it, or either I'm going to hate it. And so I kind of enjoyed it. No, I think that's wrong to say. Because I really did enjoy it. Because if, if I really hated it, I wouldn't have bought it to finish this, but I really love the atmosphere of which this world is being created. Like, the description of this world is very intriguing and very immersive. And I would say the writing is both straightforward and, like, lyrical. It's not so lyrical. And the way that I feel like, the, the way the atmosphere of this world has been described makes it feel extremely magical. It makes it feel um, very whimsical. And I think it's thanks to the writing style as well. Which, um, yes, it is. But the truth is that a lot of people say that you should go into Paranesi knowing pretty much nothing about the story. And I totally agree with that sense because I really know nothing about it. I just know roughly a little bits and bobs about it. Um, but going into it not knowing anything helps to unravel the mystery in a way that feels satisfying. I would say I already kind of figured out what exactly this place is and how the system works and how things work um, easily within the first like 50 pages of this, it, it became very clear that we, where our character Paranesi is, 
um, and what is linkage to different things of this world. And it became very clear, but of course the mystery lies in really the plot line of the interactions that Paranessi has with other characters uh, in this world and um, trying to figure out exactly where is Paranessi and how did Paranessi get there was part of what made the story intriguing. But I think if you're someone who likes uh, the Wayward Children series where uh, where these children go to different whimsical magical lands and you like the whimsical feeling of magical lands, I would say Paranessi would totally fit uh, into that kind of genre where it feels magical and not sinister. I think that was one very important thing about it is that the world did not feel any less than magical and whimsical. Like I know I'm repeating these words a lot, but that's literally the whole vibes. There is no sinisterness of like the place. There's no like intrigue in that sense. It just feels very calming to be reading about this world and you feel like you're there with Paranessi and you can feel like you know the, the parts of it has a lot of water in this world. It's like an ocean of sorts. And you can, you can you feel like you can hear the ocean in the background as you read the story. And I think that immensely gave me that joy. And because I was so much in nature um, during my trip, I, I kind of felt that feeling that Paranessi felt of peace and quietness and, and, and just calmness being in like within a world that is so fully powered by uh, nature. And I thought it was an excellent choice for where I was going. And uh, therefore, I really enjoyed the story. But truly, um, just based on vibes, if you like magic realism kind of books, if you like um, whimsicalness, um, and you like a storytelling that is very straightforward and fast and quick, and you want to get into fantasy, I would say Paranessi is pretty good for that, really. So I did enjoy myself. But the other thing that I was caught off guard that I did not expect myself to um, read during Japan was actually something I started, uh, which is something that I started actually at the end of the trip, which is, which is, as I said, uh, Yakuza Fiance. I can't remember the Japanese name, but it's like Rain was Taijin something something. And I can't remember, but um, I, I, I saw on Instagram that it was getting adapted into a anime and I was very intrigued by the plot line of the of this Yakuza boss. So the idea is that it's an arranged marriage. Um the granddaughter of a Yakuza clan gets engaged to a grandson of another Yakuza clan and it's meant to like seal alliances between the two. Uh and they're both like high school students. And I don't know what I expected going into this because I did not really just base off the premise um, went into this knowing this premise. I kind of just went with like what I saw in the visuals of the trailer of this anime and kind of had the feeling that this was like something I know I would like. And I was certainly not wrong. So when I said that I started this at the end of my trip, I really meant like the last day of my trip, the day I was going home. I read this in the morning all the way to the night time like when I reached home already and like into the afternoon and night time I was I finished it all in one shot because it was so addictive it was so addictive I, I oh wow it's been so long since I read like a I would say like a like a romance kind of manga like not from my past, like something that's new and, and, and just came out like maybe like five years ago about now. Something that is more recent. It's been so long since I've read something so recent um, and, and new to me and thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it to the point that I think it has put me into a slump. Like genuinely, I, I'm kind of afraid now because I, I'm in the actual slump. I read this yesterday. Uh, I finished it yesterday and then I read it again today by skipping like all the non like really like essential parts of the story just to experience the ah uh, the growth and the beauty of these characters and I just I can't. So our two main characters are both quite different in nature but they're really weird. I I 
fell like head over heels immediately, immediately for our female main character Yoshino. She is so cool and she's so like okay, other than drawing wise, we already know that usually manga um is drawn really well, like it will look pretty she will look pretty for sure, but she was like she was so charismatic, she's so charming. And I, I didn't know what to expect of her, you know. Usually when reading you know, I'm so used to reading like Sojo like manga that 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 the main character of this kind of stories where Yakuza is involved or like a really alpha alpha male is involved, the women is usually like the main character women. Uh she is usually really like meek or like cries a lot or just like doesn't be c- cannot really stand up for herself or like it's very like very much a girl's girly girl and I'm not saying those things are wrong, it's just that I'm so used to that that I'm like, okay, this is just how it's always been. I, I get used to that. But she's so different. She really is the kind of protagonist that I really like, which is kind of a semi boyish like protagonist that is a girl. Um, but but you know, boyish in terms of characteristics, but it's still very well into their feminist uh, qualities, like fem feminine I would say qualities. You know, she has you know, beautiful long hair, she dresses up well, you know, she's she's still after all a lady, but her mindset is very much like I would say stronger, less um less whiny, um very resilient. I would say none of this are necessarily like guy qualities. What I mean is just that the based on those other girls where they're kinda of more meek, they're softer, they're more quote unquote feminine, she displays the kind of boss girl boss qualities that I really really love uh, and I was so hit over heels from, for her from the very side I was like this girl um, she has me as a choco I'm incredibly in love with her and I can see why our main guy is a simp for her for the main guy he's extremely weird like for the first three volumes I was really like not into him He's like a fuck boy. He fucks around with like multiple older women since the age of like 13 or 14 years old, which is now 18. I find it really unbelievable that older women would be interested in like a boy who barely broke through puberty and stuff. And how illegal is that? Okay, whatever. And um well he's he's really violent, he's a matricist. Uh and, and things like that where I, I really can't like he is the quintessential guy that you see nowadays in romance novels that people love like people are like a guy that will kill for her a guy that will simp for you and um things like that but I think over time um as the story reveals itself you, you get to learn a little bit more about him and and how he really is a multifaceted character I wouldn't say those qualities are necessarily good qualities, but at least he is an all-rounder, like he's not just a good guy. I think if it was just a good guy, I would kind of like lame. But it's because he has so many layers to him. Like, even though he is an extremely violent person and the first thing he would do if, you know, Yoshino gets attacked or gets hit will be to first defend her and people love that and I agree that a guy who likes his woman or loves his woman should should then do that. But yeah, so he, he would like violent, be really violent and really, really violent. We're not like talking about like punch and that's it. Like our author really goes into a bit of like a crude, um, like, like drawings of, of how he really beats people up. So you can tell like how vi- he has really like truly violent tendencies. Uh, not great. Um, he's mattressist, so he likes sort of seeing people getting hurt which I don't know if this is really a truly a quality of him or like you know this is more of a uh, subconscious thought that he shouldn't be saying out loud but says it out loud anyway yeah um, but, but but he really ultimately uh, is really really multifaceted because then again with all these weird ass qualities about him he's an extreme gentleman like like a really good person um, not really good person meaning like he treats people right like he really would treat people right like people that he care about right especially with Yoshino he's a gentleman he is definitely really domesticated like he can bake he can cook and, and, and there was one part where he kind of made a mistake with her and he and she was ignoring him 
and multiple times he kept like trying to approach her and he he baked like cakes for her he he, he and, and he um made breakfast he, he cooked because he knows that he, she likes all these things and sh- our main character Yoshino is such a foodie uh, so you know he he wants to please her and he wants to be so- you know he knows when to say sorry and he's very meek and he anticipates her needs really really well and really is ultimately a gentleman despite all those weird shit about him so over time I kind of grew on to him and I, I kind of see like how it is um, with him and he's really a total sim for her like at this point in the story our Yoshino is really a girl that is just like she doesn't care about other people like uh, not not other people what I mean is like she's very practical so when he just like keeps on expressing like oh I love you Yoshino or like oh you're very cute you're beautiful you know you know I, I, I cannot live without you and he says all these like proclamations he's just really level-headed and she'll be like what is wrong with you like okay like thanks for saying that but it kind of doesn't make sense for the context that we are like talking in and stuff and she's really level-headed she's not easily like she doesn't get easily buttered up that's my point and and that's why i like her so much because it's really hard to find a protagonist who doesn't even even get to that little bit of embarrassment she doesn't feel embarrassed she just gets shocked and then she'll be and then she'll think to herself like what exactly does this guy want from me like she actually gets confused by his like bipolar kind of personality and i get it because i think that's just realistic and she's cute so for now for him he's such a such a big simp for her and there is a change in how he is with her right now especially after um i think a certain arc um that happened already and and you can see that that the very very subtle change in the way he is viewing her nowadays and what was before just like almost uh, like an animalistic interest in her where there's a lot of curiosity but also extreme feelings for her I feel now has softened to something where he feels genuinely like you know there is this genuine genuine at the very bottom of his heart deep love for her and I feel like wow nice (laughs) really like I get really enamored like if anyone can love me so deeply like I, I mean, I think I, I do have people like that, but but then you, you can't see from a third person's point of view, how that looks like, right? So when you are a third person looking in, to someone's like romance or familial love, you feel that deep sense of love that you you wouldn't be able to feel if you were in their shoes, because you can't see what is from like a really biased perspective. But when you you take a step back and you see it from above, you can feel that quiet like m- quiet attraction and, and and a dedication to the person and, and that's something that i always love when it comes to reading romance manga and that's what really pushes me to like read more of this kind of thing and and you know the main reason of not wanting to read this kind of things anymore is the fact that i don't want to be obsessed with this stuff anymore because when I get obsessed is I, I get put into a slum and I don't feel like I can live my life because my life feels like really dull compared to whatever they're going through. Not that I want to go through whatever they're going through, but you get my point. Yeah. So this is pretty much like it for what I've read. And it's kind of a full blown review of the two things that I read. And I really recommend that you pick up both things. Um especially if you're a manga reader and you love like sojo manga this is actually what they call a seinen manga which i don't really know what that means i've never really come across it i know jose which is like older women i guess this is like a older guy one i have no idea because it's written by a woman i think it's clearly for the female gaze because i completely feel like i'm being attracted to both the female and the male protagonist and it's just shocking anyway I recommend picking up both um, if you can because both are great and especially if you're already into romance uh, romance itself I think the whole Yakuza thing is a lot of people's thing nowadays where it's like a boss man oh oh wait 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 I, I did think about this if you like Jade City and you know you like uh, Jade um, City's um, Hilo and, and his wife 
uh, Wen, uh, Wen, oh, yeah, Wen and Hilo's relationship. This is like you can you can say like a fan, um, interpretation of how you could view their relationship in different sense, like a yakuza boss and a girl who is not really involved in yakuza business, and and it's the same same thing, essentially, um, very very basically the same thing though. Their stories are vastly different. Anyway, my point is, pick up both of these books, and I hope you enjoyed the vlog. Um, I know I've talked a lot already, so I'm cutting it off here. Um, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to this channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.